Kyle Platt here with Carrie Wedler. Carrie, thank you so much for being on. Thanks for having me. And and you made this YouTube video of yourself burning your Obama shirt. It has exploded. Uh, conservative blogs are putting it up and saying, look, this is great. Uh, liberal blogs are putting it up and saying, look, this is terrible. Uh, you know, <laughs> it's always good when you can create something that creates such a visceral response from so many people. That's always good. But, but why did you do it? And why is it important for other people who are former Democrats, myself included, mm -hmm. to understand the message behind it? Well, okay, I did it because I found the shirt in a drawer. <laughs> I hadn't seen it or used it since college. And I had made such a transformation since the last time I saw that shirt. It was just sort of a ceremonial burning. I just thought it would be funny. Um, couldn't use the lighter, had to use the blowtorch. And I just <laughs> decided to do it. And I think it's important um to be able to see past obama but it's not just obama the reason i did it is because i've come to such an understanding of government really and obama is a very great representation of what happens when you have an overarching government and one that has no oversight and one that's really predicated on force and so i thought it was just a great opportunity to use that as a jumping off point to really get more philosophical about the inherent violent nature of government because obama is very violent sure i now i'm not sure that he's any more violent than other presidents? I mean, you can point to some things, uh, the, the kill list, uh, the drone bombings, etc. But I think the thing that really stood out to me, uh, and I'm not sure if this is the same for you, I'll ask you. The thing that really stood out to me as a former Democrat was that here is a guy that ran on a platform of being the diametric opposite of what we had had with George W. Bush. Mm -hmm. He said, you know, look at these stupid wars. We need to get out of these. We need to be more transparent. We'll tell you what the government's doing instead of trying to keep it in secret. And it was immediately apparent to me, not even after the first year of the Obama presidency, that this was not what he was going to do, that we had all been tricked into thinking it was what he was going to do. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and, and I'm sure people that have been libertarians for a long time think, oh, well, this is just naive, you know. But it's important for people to have that realization that mm -hmm. the politicians are not on your side. The government's not on your side. They're not going to do what they tell you they're going to do. In fact, many times the opposite. And I think I'm surprised that more Democrats didn't understand this or more former Democrats didn't understand this because, I mean, he just, he didn't do what he was going to do. It's, it's Bush light or Bush plus either way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's Bush with better packaging. And that's the thing that gets me about the Democrats is, I mean, make no mistake about it, I'm not a fan of conservatives or right wingers either. Anyone that wants to impose their will on me and others using the government is not my friend. But I think that Democrats are a lot better at marketing um, an image that they care about people and that they want peace and that they want freedom. Um, and when in reality, it couldn't be further from the truth. And the thing about Obama was he was just such a good salesman. And I fell for it. And again, most libertarians would say, well, you, all you had to do was Google his campaign contributions and you would have known. But I think the state of American politics is just the case that no one really takes that effort and everyone has been so disillusioned. And in the case of Obama, people just wanted to believe that something good was coming after Bush. And they wanted to just take what they were given and pretend, or, I mean, in their mind, they weren't pretending. They really thought that there was change coming. But instead of being rational about it, they were so overwhelmed with how much they hated George Bush that they were willing to take anything they could get. And I mean, people were enthusiastic about Hillary, too. It's just Obama edged her out because he was a little bit more uh, nuanced and articulate and just had more pizzazz, I guess, to how he was selling himself. I think that's a really good point. And it's something I've thought about a lot recently. It's the team mentality. I look at it this way. Uh, I'm a big fan of the Oklahoma City Thunder. And the more I watch this basketball team, the more I care about them. And the more I start to feel actual, even though it's really silly because this is a basketball game, I start to feel like visceral reactions, like hate toward the people that are playing them, especially in the playoffs. But that's similar to what happens in politics. We there are individuals who adopt politicians. They say, well, Obama's my president or John mm -hmm. Boehner is, is my congressman. Mm -hmm. And then the whole, the, even the idea that someone would oppose them, even if they might be completely wrong on an issue, even mm -hmm. if they might do something that you completely disagree with. Like I think most liberals think that drone bombing is bad, but what's worse than that? 
the fact that someone would oppose your president, right? right. It's that rah mm-hmm. rah go team mentality that I think is so destructive. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Absolutely, and I think that it's very easy to rationalize what Obama does because, again, he's coming off of Bush, and he has a very different way of making war than George Bush did. George Bush was very clumsy and heavy-handed about it. He just invaded some countries, and Obama is much more, again, to use the word nuanced. I mean, he has drone bombings and he has airstrikes and he's very manipulative in how he sells his wanting to go to war and he's turned it into humanitarian war. And so that makes it a lot easier for liberals to rationalize what he does. And it makes it a lot easier for them to continue to hate Republicans. And the truth is no one represents the people. And it's silly that people think that they're playing or that they are on a team and that these people are representing them. They're completely different. I mean, these people are rich and elite and taking money from lobbyists. That's corruption. And the average person isn't corrupt. The average person is pretty honest in their dealings and just wants to have fair trade and to be productive and to get along with people. And it's so different from what you see in the political sphere. But people have been so conditioned to believe that they're represented by these people that they're willing to look past all of that. Because I can remember being in, I think it was civics class in my senior year of high school. And they teach you how the government works and they teach you that it represents you. And every few years you vote and if you don't like the politician or they're not representing you you can change the person and then you'll get someone who represents you and it's just this big myth that we've been taught to swallow our whole lives and it leads to people like obama being in power let's talk a little bit about the response or the backlash okay sure um well the response really was overwhelmingly positive and i got people from all sides of the political spectrum very excited and reaching out to me but There was a pretty strong negative reaction from the neocons um, and not necessarily because I well, I guess it was because I was anti-war and I was saying things that they didn't agree with. But they were mad at me because they thought it was my fault that Obama got elected, to which I say, well, whether or not I had voted, number one, I'm in California. He was going to win California anyway. And do you honestly think John McCain was going to be any different? And that's the disconnect is they think that if it had been John McCain or Mitt Romney, something would have been different. And it's it's just so silly to me. And they were just, I just got, you know, she's stupid. She's, she doesn't get it. She's a libertarian. Oh, she'll get it someday. Someday she'll realize that libertarians (laughs) are crazy. And it's like, no, pal, I've, I've come to the point of my philosophy where I understand that it needs to be based in principle, not on emotion and fear mongering and wanting to have the biggest military in the world. So it's, it was easy to take the criticisms with a grain of salt because I know that they're coming from a place of violence and of fear and hatred. So It was easy to brush off, but they were there. Although, I mean, I had people like Alan West sharing my video and I I don't even know where that came from because it was interesting. People would watch the video and I don't know if they watched to the end where I was talking about the nature of government because they were very quick to criticize. And some people were calling me anarchists, the people who did watch till the end. But uh, it was just exciting to see that people, even if they were neocons, to see that people were at least paying attention and excited to see that someone was saying something. I mean, it's better than nothing. And now I have a bunch of neocons following me, so maybe I can get through to them. <laughs> sure, sure. In, in, a, in a funny way, the people who were condemning you actually get it, and the people that were supporting you in this video didn't get it at all. Right. <laughs> because like we were talking about with the, the Go Team response, people mm-hmm. clicked on the video because they said, oh, I hate Obama too. Yeah, I want to exactly. see a shirt get burned. But I think you did a really cool thing by lecturing at the end and letting people know if they did watch to the end that no, if if you support John Boehner, John McCain, Newt Gingrich, anybody like that, you're wrong too. And don't think that you're any different. I that's I mean on I think it's kind of brilliant marketing, really. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, I just wanted to be sure that I was making that point. That's something that I try to address in most of my videos, if not all of them, because I think it's vital. You can hate Obama as much as you want, and you can hate John McCain and John Boehner as much as you want. But if you're not basing that in principle, like libertarians do, then it's sort of lost because you're just swinging back and forth from left to right, and you're stuck in the paradigm. Definitely. Well, I mean, it's been fantastic, Carrie. Thanks so much. Um, Look forward to talking to you on Liberty Me and uh, look forward to seeing more of your videos. Oh, that's important. Tell us uh, how we can watch more of your videos. All right. Well, okay. My URL for YouTube is from when I was 18. So 
My technical channel name is Carrie Elizabeth 824 and <laughs> my spelling is C-A-R-E-Y, but you can just search Carrie Wedler and you'll find me. You can find me on Facebook, Carrie Wedler, and I have a blog. I'm actually more of a writer than I am a YouTuber. So it's www.inrogue.co, no M on the end. It's my little company. So you should go read my blog. I write a lot about these issues too. So thank you so much for having me. It was great to be on a libertarian oriented radio show or program. I really appreciate it. It's always fun to talk to like-minded people. Definitely. Everybody uh, check her stuff out. And uh, like I said, thanks so much for being on. Thanks again. All right. <laughs>